So we got the hardware installation done. Now we're gonna focus on the electrical side of a nitrous oxide installation. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. And as always, I gotta start out by thanking all the new subscribers, all the existing subscribers, everybody who takes the time to comment, like these videos. Listen, if you're not already a subscriber, hit that button down below, sign up. It's a great community to be involved in. A lot of people are sharing great information. And so we would love to have you as a member of the garage. That being said, I also need to thank our sponsors for this segment, Nitrous Express. We are installing a Nitrous Express dry shot kit on Project Country Club. I'm gonna throw a link. I have a playlist specifically for these videos that'll make it easy for you to catch up. We're going through every step of the install. The first one, we did an overview of the kit that we're installing on this, talked about some of the different components. The second one, we did the bottle solenoid line install. And then the last one, we did the jet and finished out the purge kit stuff. So today we're gonna to focus on some of the electrical. In particular, we're gonna wire up the purge kit and we're gonna wire up the solenoid. Uh, the actual duty cycle solenoid. So whenever you get a kit like this, it's gonna come with instructions that will give you a real good diagram of how to wire this thing up using an automotive relay for your solenoid because you wanna be able to send this a high current of uh, voltage to make sure that you can drive this thing. Now, don't ever run these things for longer than 20 seconds. It will burn them up. They are uh, not designed to be ran longer than that. But we're not necessarily doing that. Actually, we're just not doing that. We're gonna be running this off of a progressive setup and not even the standard progressive setup. Nitrous Express has a really awesome uh, progressive, the EZ Maximizer that plugs right in place of this relay and allows you to dial a window of time in to progressively ramp up your solenoid. Go check it out. I'll put a link down below if you are looking for progressive. Why do we run progressive? Well, the big thing about progressive is it allows us to ramp up the power so we're not shocking the motor, not shocking the drivetrain, which on Project Country Club is very important because this is not the most robust, robust, robust motor and transmission combination. So even though we're going to do some silly stuff with it with nitrous, we don't want to go out and, and melt something down or break some parts the first time we apply nitrous to this setup. That being said, we're going a little bit of a different route because we have a Holley Terminator X already installed in the car. So we're going to be using the nitrous control system off of that to drive our solenoid. This solenoid in this case that we're using is about a 10 amp load solenoid. And so I'm using a 15 amp MOSFET power supply that accepts a pulse width modulated signal and then bumps it up. So basically we're going to have a low amperage signal coming from the ECU and it goes to a module that then allows it to be amplified up to 15 amps. No guarantee that this thing's gonna work as a cheap little Chinese piece of electronics, but I thought it would be fun to test that out. Uh, other than that though, on the purge system, it's not really as critical. We're gonna basically run it directly off of a switch that we install on the dash so we can purge it. And you know, you're only purging for a couple seconds at a time. We'll keep it in line with a five amp fuse, but I'm not running it through a relay or anything. We're just gonna apply power directly to it. Now, something to keep in mind, these solenoids are not, uh, polarity doesn't really matter on them. So you've got two wires, either one can be positive or negative. And so we're actually gonna be sending positive power voltage to both of them so we can connect the negatives together, bring those back to a common ground. And that's one step easier on the uh, wiring situation. Now, one thing that I do like to do whenever I start doing some a project like this is kind of mock out and test everything out. And in fact, I have got the switch that I'm using for purge. The system comes with a nice big red switch you can put on there, but I happen to have this nice light up LED style one that we can use for purge also. And so I've got it temporarily wired up. Let me go ahead and bring the camera over here so you can see what I'm talking about. When it comes to working on cars, one of the things that we're always looking for is a switched power supply. I've gone ahead, added a auxiliary fuse box that is being ran off a relay that is triggered off a switched power supply. So this thing draws power directly from the battery through this relay and then gives us six terminals in which we can actually have access directly to a uh, already switched power supply. So I run things like the EFI off of it, uh, whatever that thing is, is probably would be my guess is the uh, TCM 
Let's see what it says. It says it's the autopilot. I'm guessing that's the transmission control module. And in fact, we're gonna be installing another one of these in the back and it will be bridged to receive uh, its signal for its relay off of this also. Because the battery's in the back though, it will be receiving power directly from the battery. That being said, I have temporarily wired up our little switch here. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and throw the fuse in and you can see it lights up eh, nice and pretty. On top of it, I've got my nice little fluke meter over here. You don't need a fluke by any means, but it's always good to have a nice meter, uh, multimeter around so you can check things. We have it going to ground and then going to our yellow lead, which is gonna be the lead that goes to our solenoid. And the big thing that we're looking for is just to make sure that we're getting voltage on here whenever we push our button. I don't know if you can see that or not, but we got 11.8 .8 volts coming through it. Let go, goes away. Good to go. So it's always nice whenever you're dealing with electronics like this to go ahead, test things out before you go through the trouble of pulling all of this wire through. I'm gonna go ahead and loom this thing up, get it ready to get installed in the dash, and we'll pick up from there. Okay, I've got my purge wires ran up from the dash. I've got plenty of length here for now. We'll touch on that in a bit. For now though, uh, let's go ahead and talk about wiring the solenoids. As I said, we're going to do common ground and I'm just actually going to go down to a frame bolt right here for the ground. Should be perfect. Let's go ahead and measure this out. Give us a little bit of slack and cut it off. Now, whenever it comes to things like this where you're using ring terminals like we're getting ready to use here to establish our grounds, make sure you're using the proper tools. It's very important to get a good crimp on there and using pliers or needle nose is not a good crimp. Go out. Get yourself an actual pair of crimpers. That way you know that you're gonna get a good long lasting crimp that has good continuity because ground continuity is everything. Go ahead and give the wires a little bit of a reef twist here. And I always like to go ahead and load up my terminal in my crimpers and then add the wires. And this yellow one's got plenty of space. Get her smushed down real nice and good. Tug test, now that's a good crimp. Okay, I've got my solenoid wires pulled over. Green for go, white for blow, fumes out the front. Pretty straightforward, I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my purge switch real quick to the wires that I pulled from the engine bay, which are right here. In order to do that, I'm actually going to pull my loom back a ways here. Yellow is my purge, let's go ahead and Strip back a good chunk of wire there. Actually, I'm going to cut this one short and I'll show you why. Let's cut it about there. Strip off a good chunk. Give her a good reef. Grab our crimpers here and throw a crimp on it. Now, for our purge solenoid, I've already stripped it and reefed it, so I'm gonna go ahead and feed it into our butt splice here. It's a tight fit, give it a little bit of a twist to get her in there. Nothing wrong with that, it just means you'll have a better crimp. Now that that's done, let's go ahead and pull our loom slack back out. We're gonna pull it over the end, like so, of our purge connector and then tape it up. And then you can melt the ends of this. I personally just take some electrical tape, give it a nice wrap to keep it from unraveling. Just kind of clean the job up like so. Bingo. Okay, so now that we've got that done, I need to put some ring terminals on here and we'll be able to lay this in beside, and I'm actually gonna run it over the top of the fuse block here, kinda of keep everything clean, and then we can focus on wiring in the nitrous solenoid. Okay, I wanted to take a moment real quick to share with you my progressive controller that I've kinda of built out and designed here. This is the MOSFET controller. This is gonna be the trigger wire here that comes off of the ECM, that's PWM goes in, solders in on the board. I'm getting ready to actually go in and silicone this up and pot it. Uh, this is our high 
side voltage power and ground which are going to be coming off of our fuse block and then there will be an output here out the side that goes to our solenoid that will take a pulse width modulation signal on this bump the amperage up and send the signal out on this i've got a lid that screws down on this but just wanted to take a moment kind of share you what i'm working with uh no guarantees that this is going to work we're going to try it uh you know that's what we do here at the garage we try new things figure out new ways of doing things. And then, as I said, there's always options out there of going over to uh, some solid state relays, things like that. So they get pretty expensive. You can look to spend over $100 for a solid state relay to run a, pulse, a higher amperage pulse with modulation signal. So hopefully this will work out. We'll just have to wait and see whenever we get to the point of actually uh, doing the tuning. Okay, we're back and Thanks to the modern marvel of editing, you're never gonna know that this is actually three days after we started recording this for the electrical hookup on the Nitrous Express Kit. Now, what happened was, is the original control module that I installed has what's called a low side trigger on it. Now, what does that mean? That means that it is technically, if you were to look at a mechanical relay, it is like a normally closed contact that whenever there's, it's not energized, it allows continuity across and so because of that, we were actually opening the solenoid up right off the bat. So what I did was I went out and I got the high side driver from Holly. There's a lot of different manufacturers and a lot of different style relays, uh, solid state relays that you can use that'll do high side driving. You need to make sure though it is high side. That way if something were to fail, it doesn't open your relay up like that other one would have done. Uh, so that being said, one thing you need to be aware of is if you were to come in here and just wire into this relay. Orange right now, which just came unhooked here, is our input to the relay. Blue is coming out of the relay here. And then I've got my meter on the blue leg with it grounded to the battery. We're showing 11 and a half volts on there. That can be uh, something that will throw you off and think, oh, that's not right. That's because there's no load on this. Now, if we go ahead and tie in this little LED push button, you'll notice that the push button does not light up. So what we have then is our trigger wire, which goes back to our ECU. And our ECU in this case is a PWM, our pulse width modulation, negative signal out to trigger our relay. Uh, on most of the uh, base uh, model style aftermarket ECUs, it's gonna be PWM negative. Some of the higher end ones can do PWM positive. Keep that in mind though, you need to use the signal that your relay is expecting. This one is expecting a negative. So if we go ahead and touch this to our negative post, basically giving it a negative signal. I don't know if you can see that, but there is our light flashing on and off. That is the relay closing. And so basically what we will be doing through the ECM is pulsing this a lot. You know, to the point where you really won't be able, you wouldn't be able to see it. The light would almost look like it was constantly on until you got to full duty cycle, which is 100% pulse width modulation. Basically, you are saying that your period is the same length as your duty, or your duty is the same length as your period, and then you have full on. Now, if we had a 10% uh, duty on a one second period, that would be a tenth of a second it would be on and then off. It, it will go back and forth. So it will be a tenth of a second on, tenth of a second off, tenth of a second on, tenth of a second off. So effectively, in a one second period, you're going to trigger it five times, if that makes sense. So that is something to check out whenever you are getting your relay to do your pulse width modulation for progressive. Now, that being said, I'm going to go unwire that other control box real quick, throw this one in the loop. It is straightforward. As I said before, we have 12 volts coming in off of our switched relay panel, or our switched fuse panel. And then on blue, we have 12 volts going out that will go to our nitrous solenoid. And then on the small wire in the middle, this is our trigger wire, it will go to the PWM negative out from our ECU. Okay, we've got the relay mounted in here. Some nice Gorilla double-sided tape. Our orange is coming right off the positive leg of our fuse block here coming in then our blue ties back into our harness that runs all the way over to the solenoid and then our trigger wires right here you can also get a look at how i like to use good old hockey stick tape 
as a cloth wrap. I still need to clean a lot of this up. I'm not done figuring out which wires I still need to maintain on this setup. So there's, there's a little bit of a mess going on over here. Eventually that'll all be cleaned up and it'll either be nylon loomed or wrapped in hockey stick tape. Hockey stick tape's a lot cheaper than the cloth tape that you can get down at the auto parts store. Uh, and it works great. I mean, it's resilient. It's, it's basically like the cloth tape that you see underneath the dash and stuff like that. It's a good clean way of wrapping everything up. We should be good to go. I need to double check, but I think I've got a tune in there that will allow me to manually cycle that solenoid. As I said, all we're doing is taking power, bringing it in, sending it back out to the solenoid. The solenoid then goes to ground. This relay is triggered by a pulse width modulation negative signal from the ECU that will cycle based on the duty cycle we have set in the tune. Uh, as I said, right now I have a tune in there that I would not suggest anybody doing that has a, basically lets me trigger that solenoid at 0% throttle. Heck, I think it'll let me trigger the solenoid when the car's off, when just the ignition's on. So let's see if it works. Okay, we got everything wired up. Let's go ahead and test everything out. I'm gonna test the push button for the purge solenoid first, and then we're gonna test the nitrous solenoid. Right now, I've got it set up to trigger at 1% TPS for like three or four seconds, even without the car running, just so we can verify that this will click in and click back off. So let's give it a shot. Okay, first we're gonna go ahead and test the purge solenoid. Everything sounds good there. Now for the nitrous solenoid. There it goes. And there it kicked off. So that's the meat and potatoes of the electrical install. Not that bad. Other than the little trip up on the controller, we ended up getting the right solenoid in there or getting the right relay in there, I should say. Everything looks good so far. So with all that wrapped up, what do we have coming up next? Well, obviously we've got tuning to do. We're gonna start low, probably progressive up to a 50 shot over a pretty wide RPM band just to make sure our fueling looks good. We'll talk more about that in both the Terminator X and HP tuners, some of the things that you need to adjust there. Specifically talking about timing, getting some base fueling set up, things like that. Base fueling is not as big an issue on the wet, but since we're running a dry kit, we will have to set up an enrichment table through the Terminator X. On top of it, we're gonna to have to get around to installing our bottle heater. We've got an automatic bottle heater. Uh, I've got to do some electrical work in the back to provide a fuse, uh, fused connection back there and then a signal to enable that. So basically we'll tie a relay in in the back that whenever we hit a button on our digital dash, it will allow the automatic bottle heater to kick on and then it has a set point that you can set based on pressure to try and maintain the consistent pressure which then gives you consistent times whenever you're racing. Uh, so that's coming in the near future. On top of it, this weekend, I am picking up a mother bottle and we are gonna dive into how to fill your own 10 pound bottles, 15 pound bottles, et cetera, at home off of a mother bottle. Nitrous Express has been very kind to send me one of the connection kits and uh, one of the 110 volt bottle heaters so we can heat up the mother bottle and then we will go ahead and freeze the uh, 10 pound bottle so we can transfer from a big bottle down to a small bottle and we'll kind of dive in what it takes to find those things uh, because it's a pain in the butt nowadays trust me i had to call a lot of places and what you can expect to spend versus going down to your local speed shop if you have one and having them fill the bottle there. So as always, big shout out to Nitrous Express for all their support on this continued project. I, we're almost to the point which you guys are waiting for where we actually dive into the tuning. Appreciate you letting me take the time to show people who might be interested in the installation side of it, kind of the steps that they should expect when going through a project like this. Honestly, this is something that can easily be done on a Saturday by yourself. Uh, so. Don't be afraid to dive into it. And nitrous is safe if you know what you're doing. So that's why we are doing this multi-part series so you can do and have the background to properly install, tune, and run nitrous on your setup. I want to thank all the subscribers out there, everybody who's throwing that like. If you haven't hit it yet and you made it this far into the video, please hit that thumbs up button. That gets this video out to more people. Don't forget to check out the live show Thursday nights, 8 Eastern. Uh, we'll be giving away some swag. Might be able to even give away some Nitrous Express swag uh, here soon. So stick around for that. You don't want to miss it. I've got some extra license plate frames and maybe a hat or two that I can send out your guys' way. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting on? Click that button down in the corner. Thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.